Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So in this video, I will be explaining you all about severe combined immunodeficiency disorder. In order to understand severe combined immunodeficiency disorder, we need to have a little bit background about uh, purine salvage enzymes. Now what are these purine salvage enzymes, how the purines are salvaged and what if there is a deficiency of any of the enzymes involved in this particular process. I have a detailed video on purine salvage enzymes and purine salvage pathway, pyrimidine salvage pathway. Link for that video is there in the description below. Let's begin to understand what is severe combined immunodeficiency disorder. Now, Adenine which is a free base, it is converted into adenosine monophosphate by APRT enzyme and now the adenosine monophosphate, if the cell doesn't want adenosine monophosphate, if the cell is undergoing a turnover process and all that, now the adenosine monophosphate further it is converted into adenosine and uh, this job it will be done by an enzyme called 5' prime nucleotidase enzyme and during this process there will be release of inorganic phosphate. Now what will happen to adenosine there? Now the adenosine it can be converted into adenosine molecule and the job is done by adenosine deaminase enzyme. Okay, once you get adenosine there, so adenosine can be converted into hypoxanthine and hypoxanthine again it will get back into adenosine monophosphate and all that. <coughs> Sorry, adenosine monophosphate and all that. So the, I have a video on that, you can take a look at that particular video. So now, my question here is uh, what causes severe combined immunodeficiency disease? How it is related with this purine salvage pathway? Now the severe combined immunodeficiency disorder can be classified based on the causes into, uh, based on the inheritance pattern into autosomal recessive inheritance pattern and X-linked recessive inheritance pattern. Now the autosomal recessive inheritance pattern of uh, severe combined immunodeficiency disease is because of uh, deficiency of ADA that's the uh, autosomal recessive causes. I'm explaining autosomal recessive causes. So the deficiency of ADA, so ADA deficiency, adenosine deaminase enzyme deficiency, that's what is ADA here, adenosine deaminase deficiency can give rise to autosomal recessive uh, severe combined immunodeficiency disorder. So that is SCID, Severe Combined Immunodeficiency Disorder. Now the second uh, cause for autosomal recessive uh, severe combined immunodeficiency disease is a mutation in the gene that is coding for alpha chain of receptor for interleukin 7, alpha chain of uh, receptor for interleukin 7 if there is a mutation in the gene uh, which is coding for alpha chain of the receptor for interleukin 7 that will give rise to autosomal recessive severe combined immunodeficiency disorder. Now let's move on to see what is the cause for X-linked recessive inheritance pattern for severe combined immunodeficiency disorder. So the cause for that is uh, it is the mutation in the gene coding for gamma chain of uh, receptor for interleukin 2, 4, 7, 9 and 15. These are the interleukin uh, receptors, 2, 4, 7, 9, 15 interleukin receptors, especially the gene that is going coding for the gamma chain, all that will give rise to X-linked recessive inheritance pattern of severe combined immunodeficiency disease. Now let's move on to see our adenosine deaminase deficiency, how it will cause severe combined immunodeficiency disorder. Now the adenosine deaminase deficiency it will contribute to 50% of skids, severe combined immunodeficiency disease. Now majority is like ADA deficiency there. Now what happens if there is ADA deficiency? So if there is a deficiency of ADA, so what we will do is like let's decrease adenosine deaminase enzyme activity. So when there is a decrease in adenosine deaminase enzyme activity, so that means there will be increase in adenosine there. Okay, so when there is increase in adenosine, along with that there is increase in deoxyadenosine also. So adenosine coming from uh, adenosine monophosphate, deoxyadenosine is coming from say deoxyadenosine monophosphate, 5' prime nucleotidase enzyme, these are general enzymes. So you get uh, deoxyadenosine there. So it means when there is a deficiency of adenosine deaminase, so which is again a general enzyme both for adenosine and deoxyadenosine there. 
So there is elevation of deoxyadenosine also. So adenosine is elevated, deoxyadenosine is elevated. Both the molecules are elevated. So as I told you in my previous video on purine salvage pathways, the link for that video is there in the description below. So the adenosine is the only nucleoside molecule, adenosine or deoxyadenosine is the only nucleoside molecule which can be directly phosphorylated. So that means adenosine can be phosphorylated into adenosine monophosphate. It is phosphorylated into adenosine monophosphate. In the same way deoxyadenosine is phosphorylated into deoxyadenosine monophosphate. We have adenosine kinase and deoxyadenosine kinase molecule uh, enzymes here which will convert adenosine into deoxyadenosine. So when there is elevation of adenosine, elevation of deoxyadenosine because there is a decrease in the activity of adenosine kinase. So during that time there is a increase in adenosine monophosphate. Accordingly there is increase in deoxyadenosine monophosphate. So what will happen to these molecules? Now, adenosine, deoxyadenosine monophosphate will go into deoxyadenosine diphosphate, which will go into deoxyadenosine triphosphate. In the same way, adenosine monophosphate is converted into adenosine diphosphate and that will be converted into adenosine triphosphate. So, accordingly, there is increase in these molecules. So, increase in ADP and uh, increase in DADP and increase in uh, uh, ADP there and there is increase in ATP. So AMP side increase in ADP that eventually leads to increase in ATP here and the deoxyadenosine monophosphate side you have increase in ADP and increase in the ADP molecules. Now what will happen uh, because there is increase in ATP and increase in DATP because all uh, is because of deoxyadenosine uh, uh, sorry, adenosine deaminase enzyme. So, elevation of ATP and uh, DATP here, they will have an effect on ribonucleotide reductase enzyme. Now, the ribonucleotide reductase, it is responsible for conversion of uh, nucleotide diphosphates into deoxynucleotide diphosphate. I have a video on uh, activity of ribonucleotide reductase and the regulation of ribonucleotide reductase. The link for that video is there in the description below. Now, how this ribonucleotide reductase enzyme works? So, the ribonucleotide reductase, it is going to bind with the ATP. Whenever ATP is there, it's going to high levels of ATP. High levels of ATP means it binds to ribonucleotide reductase and activate this enzyme. When the enzyme is active, it is going to convert uh, UDP into uh, deoxy-UDP, uridine uh, diphosphate, then deoxyridine monophosphate, then into deoxythymidine monophosphate. Eventually, it will make deoxycytidine triphosphate and like cytidine diphosphate converted to deoxycytidine diphosphate, deoxycytidine triphosphate. Like this, uh, deoxy uh, triphosphates, uh, thymidine triphosphate, cytidine triphosphates are synthesized there by ribonucleotide reductase. And then what happens? There will be binding of GDP to ribonucleotide reductase, which is converted to deoxyguanosine diphosphate, deoxyguanosine triphosphate. And that will come and bind to ribonucleotide reductase. So, it will uh, at that time uh, there will be binding of adenosine diphosphate to active site, which will be taken into deoxyadenosine diphosphate, which will make deoxyadenosine triphosphate. And whenever there is elevation of deoxyadenosine triphosphate, it will have a negative effect on ribonucleotide reductase. So what I am trying to say here is whenever there is elevation of uh, ATP. ATP has got a positive effect on ribonucleotide reductase. Whenever there is elevation of DATP, DATP has a negative effect on ribonucleotide reductase. Now, what happened in adenosine deaminase deficiency? Because there is deficiency of adenosine deaminase, there is elevation of ATP and elevation of deoxyadenosine triphosphate. So, both the molecules are elevated here. Because of this, what happens? So, your ribonucleotide reductase has both positive and negative effect. So, whenever there is more elevation of both ATP and DATP, DATP, deoxyadenosine diphosphate has got a predominant negative effect on ribonucleotide reductase. So, overall, there will be decreased activity of ribonucleotide reductase in adenosine deaminase enzyme deficiency. Because of this, what happens? So, already there is elevation of deoxyadenosine triphosphate, but there will be decrease in the synthesis of deoxy, cytidine triphosphate, Decrease in deoxy thymidine triphosphate, decrease in deoxy 
guanosine triphosphate okay it means so overall there is a deficiency or decrease in other deoxy triphosphate for molecules so that will lead to decrease in dna synthesis so dna synthesis is decreased uh, because your ribonucleic reductase is down so note that adenosine dna is highly concentrated on lymphocytes lymphocytes are predominantly dependent on purine salvase pathway and they use this adenosine DMNA so that the salvage pathway is running. So when there is a deficiency of adenosine DMNA, so that means there will be accumulation of deoxyadenosine triphosphate, inhibiting ribonucleotide reductase, decreasing the other nucleotide, deoxynucleotide triphosphates. So that means it is going to decrease the overall DNA synthesis. That will affect uh, lymphocytes proliferation. So both the B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes which are highly expressing the adenosine DMNA, these are the worstly affected cells. So both B type of immunity and T cell, so cell mediated immunity and humoral immunity. B cells are responsible for humoral immunity, T cells are responsible for cell mediated immunity. Both the kind of immunity is down here because B cells and T cells proliferation goes down. Decrease in the number of these cells will give rise to a uh, combined deficiency which is severe in nature that is why the name of the disease is severe combined immunodeficiency disease combined means both uh, cell mediated immunity and uh, humoral immunity both the immunity is down here that is what is severe combined immunodeficiency disease so that means uh, T cells and uh, B cells both are affected so that's why patient will have opportunistic infection it can be fungal infection viral infection, bacterial infection. So, unless adenosine DMNA is enzyme replacement therapy is done, so the patient survival will be highly unlikely. So, this is what is all about severe combined immunodeficiency disease. So, I have explained this video a little faster just to uh, uh, save the time. So, you can uh, run this video slowly or pause the video and understand the concept so that your uh, concept about uh, severe combined immunodeficiency disease, especially with adenosine DMNA is clear. I hope this video has helped you in understanding the mechanism of severe combined immunodeficiency disease in relation to adenosine DMNA deficiency. Thanks for watching and uh, see you in my next video.